I know this will fall under death ears, but I'm just gonna say it just to put it out there. This is not a hate video towards Ayang at all or the group. If you watch it through the to the end, I'm absolutely not hating on the girls. It's mostly a conversation piece about it. And I do encourage you to go into the comment section below and put your thoughts behind what I'm saying. Most importantly, I'm always up for a conversation or a debate or debacle. But if you do start spewing hate on the girls, just pure out hate, I'm absolutely deleting you and blocking you most likely. Keep it cute. <laughs> Keep it cute. Let's talk Baby Monster's recent tracks, Batter Rap and Sheesh. While those songs were hyped up immensely, they really didn't hit the mark for me. Batter Rap feels too close into Blackpink style and she sounds like a throwback to 2017 with a concept that just feels a bit outdated. It's almost as if the songs were trying too hard to fit in the specific mode YG has created rather than bringing something fresh to the table. And to YG's credit, it was a different sound from the incessant Y2K resurgence we've been having, but it's just that we've had two trends that were derivatives of older genres and errors. Why would we want more throwbacks? <laughs> but then came Forever, the track that seems to have struck a chord with the general public. Quick music video slash song review. The music video goes all in on the pretty girls being pretty girls thing, which is classic K-pop, but the lyrics are pretty much a big fake out, which is basically a song that reels you in with the typical love song stereotypes, then switches to the chorus, creating a juxtaposition that was rewarding for the audience that is creating the expectation for the song. In this case, Forever starts off with a very chord heavy progression that hits you with a spoken word into a heavy dance pop chorus, then repeats the same formula for the rest of the song. The spoken word was definitely an improvement from the last two drops, but the chorus really did need some work. That Forever bit was not it for me. But to stripes, despite my gripes, I actually like the song. It's catchy and the girls gave a solid performance. In K-pop fashion, though, um, a solid release couldn't just be solid. Controversy must follow. And in this case, Ion got hit the most and the hardest. Specifically, her performance during Forever and the ones that followed afterwards. Which leads into a bigger conversation on the issue in K-pop right now the underdevelopment of idols. It seems like the idol training process has become more of a hindrance than help. On average, idols used to have spent years practicing and holding their skills till debut. And this most postmodern era of training, we're getting pushed with mere months of training, which with this big rush to debut um, the next big thing, Companies have been pushing out these groups with not with with less than enough time to master the basics before and before I see anybody start typing in my comment section. Yes, I know there is a particular group that would go great with this conversation, but they get in a two parter for their grievances. Um, I uh, gets to have this conversation with this specific subject because hers is more nuanced, I guess you can say. Um, Ayan, for example, her biggest issue is overdancing and yelling for high notes. Things that should have been ironed out during tr the trainee days. This rush to debut is what I like to call the microwave approach. It's all about quick results and not good quality. And it's creating generations at Rapid and generations of idols who aren't fully prepared to meet the demands of the industry. All while fans having the same expectation for their idols as their predecessors. So we're getting this mismatch of wants, needs, and requirements, which is setting all these idols up for failure. So to an extent, blame the companies, but not necessarily completely the companies. The fans do be setting them up for failure. There's also this like big talk 
around Baby Monster supposedly bringing back vocals as if there weren't already artists and vocalists out there who can sing incredibly well. It's kind, this kind of outspokenness has created this marketing tactic of these unrealistic expectations and put unnecessary pressure on these girls to be something they're not really ready for. Baby Monster had to get that shit out the mud for these first two um, songs and with this specific, uh, I guess you can say glow up and performances just for Ion to just get hit with hate and criticism about her ability to be a functioning idol in a group has not made this easy for them. But don't get me wrong, Baby Monster has a lot of potential, but the industry is not going to slow down for these idols to give them time to develop. And if the criticism hasn't told you enough, no one is getting mercy. And in light of the oversaturated and overzealous criticism and boundaries stepping um, we might get more talented artists like Ion struggle to struggle to reach their potential. Looking, just simply looking at what's going on with her, accepting the criticism and taking the advice of the fans. People are now creating more narratives like she's dimmed her light for the group, or the group doesn't like that she's over kind of overstepping herself into the spotlight. And even um, going as far as saying that she's throwing a fit because her facial expressions or whatever narrative they created in their head doesn't necessarily fit what she's showing on stage. And I guess you can say it comes with the territory of K-pop, but hey, what do I know? So what do you think? Is the rush to debut new groups hurting K-pop? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification so you can be notified whenever I go on to another deep dive into the K-pop world. And most importantly, bye.